Testing, testing. You guys hear me okay? Yeah. All right. Welcome to another uh, Great Mobile Monday event sponsored by Nokia. Um, tonight we're going to talk about. Uh, you guys hear me okay back there? Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, um, so um, we have uh, Nokia in the house. There's been a nice presentation about the new Windows Phone ecosystem and some local developers uh, giving uh, demos on the current apps on the platform. But before, you know walk you guys through um, like here's the agenda for tonight. Um, hashtag tonight is Momo SV. And um, we'll have an okay welcome we'll do demos and then afterwards we kinda of have a community um, kind of community mic. So for 60 seconds you got you're hiring people, you're looking for jobs, um, you have a cool event coming up, that's a good time to, to do that. And I'll take like the first ten guys that line up here. Um, and then uh, we also have giveaways. So, uh, we'll talk about giveaways. So, um, quick question, who's, who's new to Mobile Monday here tonight? First time? All right, so, basically we're a bunch of developers, entrepreneurs, um, and professionals cooperating, um, just to do education and networking events like this. Um, we're about over 100,000 members globally, over 100 cities um, globally, and we're a non organization. So here's a little list of the different cities around the world and kind of highlighted the stuff here in the U.S. Um, so what's the makeup of you guys? Who's in, who's in the audience? It's really a third product marketing folks. You have um, some media. Who's here? Who's, who's bloggers? Media? Who for media? Right. Um, you have uh, about a third of us are developers and the biz dev sales guys. Um, here's some of our sponsors in the past. Um, so also I asked you guys, you probably had a very painful sign-up process to event, right? <laughs> all the questions. But um, some of this good stuff I'd like to share with you. So, so we have, this is like, what phone do you guys currently use? And here's your makeup. So some of you guys still own Blackberry. Some you guys, hey, send me a yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, around. Um, Windows Phone is growing. It's, and it's interesting, and I, probably in a couple of months I'll, I'll show you a slide on how, how, how it's growing in the audience. Um, a lot of us have iOS devices. A lot of us probably have, how many people have two devices on the multi? Yeah. Is it like iOS, Android? iOS, Blackberry? Or Lumia. All right. Um, what's your role? So most of you guys are developers here, which is great. Uh, product guys, we have BD. Some, but there's money in the house, and we got media journalists. And we have designers. I, I kind of brought, you know, had a, a classification of designers because who are designers in here? But, like, you like that? All right, cool. Um, so I ask you, it's always like this. It's like half of you guys are always new to the mobile market, which is good. We're growing. Um, also, uh, why are you attending? A lot of you guys are coming for education. Some of people looking for a job. Wow. Any engineers looking for a job? <laughs> Like, okay, who's an engineer looking for a job? Come on. See, yeah, she has. All right, cool. Um, and then a lot of networking with industry colleagues. Um, what platforms do you support? Um, so, uh, okay, so we. This is the first time Android is larger than iOS. By the way, it's like wow, it's grown. So, um, so yeah, quite a few people. I mean, on the Windows mobile side, it's it's almost tripled in probably the last three months. Um, HTML5 also is kind of, kind of growing steadily, um, and I think the, the, the RIM and Symbian WebOS guys are slowly uh, just phasing out. Um, so I asked the question, if, if you could build an app only for one platform, what would it be? And um, <coughs> surprisingly, a lot of you, this is also a first for the group, um, more people are actually building web apps as opposed to native apps, which is... Um, is the first, which is, I mean, things, there's trends changing in the Great Valley. Um, if you're publishing, this is my frivolous plug in for GitHub. So uh, you have, most people go to Android Market, Amazon, and also GetJar, and like I say, um, the more distribution channels you have, probably the more people are looking at your app, the most likely the more downloads you have. Um, the next one is, what kind of SDKs are you guys integrating? Um, you have, Payments and billing, pretty popular. App promotion, analytics, probably. You guys are smart. You guys are trying to figure out what your apps are doing. 
and also trying to monetize it on the advertising side. The um, kind of what type of advertising SDKs do you do? This kind of is a segue to next month's event. Um, ad mediation. Who knows what ad mediation is? Anybody know what ad mediation is? Yeah, okay. All right, so next month it's going to be talking about all about ad mediation. It's a new trend in, in mobile advertising um, and probably could maybe tweak out to make you uh, higher revenue. Um, and then ad networks, yeah, everyone's familiar with ad networks, right? So I'll show you a slide of what ad networks are. Um, what types of ads make you more money? So video. Video is pretty popular. Interstitials, banners, traditional stuff, um, and app install promotions. So there's some interesting uh, breakdowns of how people are monetizing. Um, also here, which ad network, and I apologize before I end if I miss your ad network because there's about a, a kabillion okay in there. Um, so iAds is doing okay. AdMob, definitely um, kind of killing it. Um, you have Millennial, JumpTap, Belty, and Moby, AdFauna, and, and I should put a fill in for other, because there's quite a few guys that have another, another network you're monetizing. Um, so a little bit about events that we do. So we do this big meetup every month, plus we have uh, an executive dinner that we do, which is kind of cool. It's more intimate, but it's also really at an executive level. So if you guys are founders or an executive um, and interested in like that, you can contact us. Um, so we do this almost every month. Um, also tonight, um, <laughs> we, we, we have another event going on in the city tonight, um, just for developers only. And this is really focused on, um, I think, development platforms, the event tonight. Um, but really, it's like it's smaller crowds, like 40 guys, 40 people will be in a room. Um, we do uh, a two to three hour workshop, and it's more, more intensive. They throw code up on the wall, some, some help, you know, technical help, hands-on stuff with the companies that are, that are pitching their SDKs or APIs. Um, and this is our team, so we're, uh, we're, all, we're all volunteer staff, and we're, we're pretty much made up of lots of different companies here in the Valley, pretty much representing part of the whole ecosystem. Um, and that's it. I'll introduce to Chancey. Chancey Arrington. No, no, no relation to Michael Arrington, thank God. But, uh, or maybe he is. <laughs> Right. Is this, is this on? <laughs> so, first of all, if you ever call me Chanty again, I'm going to punch you in the face. <laughs> My name is not Chanty, although people that know me well might call me that. You guys don't know me well. Don't try. Uh, my name is Chanty Arrington. I had developer content marketing for uh, Nokia North America. And this is my Cabillion. What word did you have? Cabillion with a K. Cabillion with a K Mobile Monday. Matter of fact, I was talking to Mario and saying that we were here in August of last year and we're just <laughs> talking about a couple different things and coming back full circle. So, But tonight I'm only going to talk about one thing and that is Windows Phone and what we've been doing with it, where it's going and why everyone should be extremely excited. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, when I came in uh, back in August, we had just kicked off our Windows stuff. As a matter of fact, the only thing that anybody had ever seen about Windows was Steve Neal got on stage and said, everybody turn off your phones, I'm going to show you something. Which of course no one did. So this video leaked out of this Windows phone device and it looked just like our, one of our Amigo devices, the N9. And so I came to Mobile Monday to, to talk about our move to the Windows phone platform, get people excited. I couldn't show a device so I brought an N9 that wouldn't power on and, and fooled all of you. So. It was, but since then we've done so much and, uh, and come so far. So where are we today? Right now we've got six devices in market. Uh, we've expanded the ecosystem for Windows Phone platforms to 65 markets for developers. We've got devices shipping with over 80 app operators. And we've got over 80,000 applications in Marketplace. Just to give you a little bit of a reference, this was 7,000 when I was here last August. So the growth on this has been phenomenal. Um, and these are two of the ones that we've announced most recently. The first one, the 610, uh, made for entry-level markets, uh, an entry-level Windows phone, and the new Nokia Lumia 900, which is our flagship product, and also the first time that a device has come to North America in the U.S. first and been exclusive to a U.S. carrier, in this case AT&T. And it's also the first LTE Windows phone. It's a whole bunch of other firsts. It's just 
it's fucking awesome. That's that's what I should just do. <laughs> and I'm gonna change its name to where's oh, someone's from. One of my comms guys is in here, so I better chill out. <laughs> so, those are great things. What else have we done? For developers, we've seeded over 16,000 devices, getting you everything that you need to develop, and making sure that you have the support. And that's one thing that I want to communicate to everybody in here, first and foremost. Matter of fact, uh, if you work with Microsoft or Nokia for the furtherment of Windows Phone development, stand up real quick. Don't be shy. Oh, you guys are already standing up in the back. Are you, uh, stand up. What are you sitting back down for? They sit down. So there's a couple different guys in here. Find them. They all say Nokia. They have something Nokia on them. Our job here in North America is to help enable developers, entrepreneurs, companies, whatever the case may be, get them the assets that they need in order to come to Windows Phone and have a great success. We don't just stop at building an application. It's our job to make sure that you as developers, you as companies, are successful on our platform. And we're going to show some of that tonight. But let's talk only about North America for a second, because that's where my job is, and I paid for this event, so that's all I'm going to talk about. <laughs> so there, global guys that are back there. Uh, we've been doing a lot of stuff. Uh, at t Developer Summit, we kicked off the uh, Nokia Lumion 900, announced the device at CES. Devs were, got a first-hand look before anybody else at, at our uh, Nokia at t Developer Summit party. Matter of fact, we had some press get really pissed off because Developers were like taking pictures of the phone and like writing little tweets about it and oh this is so great, this is so great, and all the media were like, what is this? These guys got hands on first. But that's a, that's how important we see the furtherment of, of the ecosystem and how it relates back to developers. Uh, we just kicked off something great at South by Southwest and then of course Mobile Monday. I'm actually wrapping up a 12 city tour. Um, Mobile Monday has completely screwed my weekends for the last like 12 weeks. Uh, I've got two cities left, which I'm really excited about, Boston and Austin. But we come through and we love coming to Mobile Mondays because it represents what Mario talked about earlier. There's a whole range of people in here that affect the ecosystem in different ways. Whether it's developers, entrepreneurs, uh, professionals in the market, um, funding, whatever the case may be. A lot of good stuff. So at CES, we, we came home with over 10 awards and these are some of them. Uh, first and foremost, we got best device, best mobile phone at CES. Huge honor, all around the Nokia Lumia 900. And I have to say, I've, I've been working at Nokia for five years, and it, it, it sucks to get kicked in the nuts for five years. <laughs> but it is amazing to come out and everyone be super excited about your product, everyone having a really good time with it. There's been so many great reviews, uh, so many different positive things, and it, you know, it feels, feels really good to be the underdog that everyone's cheering for. So how is all this related back to the ecosystem? This is our growth. Since January, our app submission rate into the Windows Phone platform has increased 300% uh, just since this January. The, it's just blowing up like crazy. I think we're clo closing in on 400 applications a day, something, or over 300 applications a day now. Great stuff. So I, I wanted to show one more thing. This, uh, this video is something that our, our guys created and, and uh, it brought a little tear to my eye, so I thought I would share it with you guys, not my tears, the video, and uh, let you guys see what we've been doing and kind of what our messaging around the Nokia Lumia 900 and it being available at at t is all about. I plugged in with audio. Yeah. The wheel. The catapult. The printing press. The light bulb. Sliced bread. The greatest inventions in history have moved man forward. They also happened centuries apart and took decades to perfect. So why is it that every quarter a smartphone claims to be the next big thing? This changes everything, they say. It's revolutionary, they shout. Well, Time for a little reality check. We know that you know that we know that you know that everybody knows on some level that this is a load of bull. Since the inception of smartphones, there have been remarkable breakthroughs and just as many unforgivable oversights. An expensive phone that doesn't make reliable calls? Ridiculous. 
or one that's beautiful but requires a bulky case to make it rugged enough for normal use? Absurd. And how smart can a smartphone be if you can't figure out how to use it? These are revolutions. This is the new wheel? Please. Yes, we've been away for a while, but we've been watching, listening, and learning. So we'd like to say hello. And we'd like you to say hello to better. since sliced bread? Well, sliced bread takes pretty crappy pictures. So yes, the Lumia 900 is the best thing since sliced bread. And we believe it's the best smartphone on the market. So there, the Lumia 900 from Nokia. Say hello to better. singing that song before the before we had the video ready and my new fiance thought it was about her <laughs> and then I had to fill her in on the harsh truth I, I can't find it's, it was about her so uh, we just launched our US campaign it's the biggest baddest thing that we've done in a decade by far and we're super proud of it so if you've seen all the smartphone beta test stuff this is where we're going with consumers. Letting them know it's not, you know, Nokia traditionally has a very passive approach to how we market our phones and how we, how we present ourselves to the consumer. We, we often take a stance that, that isn't so in your face and we let, believe in letting our product speak for ourselves. Well here we want to make sure that one, our product does speak for itself, but two, that we punch consumers in the face with it and let them know how awesome it is and how they need to be a part of it. So, be on the lookout for this. The consumer, uh, the, the smartphone beta, beta test campaign, they've got great commercials running all over the place. But that doesn't really have anything to do with developers. I am gonna give you guys uh, an announcement that we're going to do. So this is gonna be live starting sometime this week, but you guys get first info on it. We kind of been looking at like what developers say they need to, in order to continue their movement into Windows Phone and be able to you know, bring in the latest applications get the latest support, et cetera. And we came across a couple different things. One, we're doing a great job, I'm gonna pat everybody on the back in here, at supporting the developers. We've got 16,000 devices that we've already seeded out. We have great support, we have great tool sets. What we need to do is provide a little bit of direction. So we came back with a couple different things that developers said that they needed. One, just because you're a developer does not mean you are innovative and that sometimes you need an idea. So two, one, we're going to help provide that idea. Two, uh, we're going to help provide motivation by giving them goals and tasks that will allow them to easily go after applications and get, reward them incrementally for everything that they do. And three, I'm going to, I'm going to, I don't remember what my third one is, but it was cool too. Um, doesn't matter. So what we're launching is thecodewarrior.com. And on this site, developers will be able to go and see a bounty board of applications that consumers and developers submit against, and that we, Nokia and Microsoft, go in and put bounties against those applications. A bounty could be uh, points, it could be badges, it could be monetary, it could be devices, etc. But it gives the developers a target to go after and say, I want an application like this, and consumers can vote it up or down, and that judges how much we're gonna pay attention to it. So to kick off the Code Warrior, we're gonna do a 14 city hackathon tour starting in May. These are some of the uh, dates you can see a list of all of them by going to nokiadeveloper.eventbrite.com. <coughs> and it'll show the entire list there. 
In order to keep this thing off right, we're putting up 1,400 devices as prizes at 100 in each one of these 14 cities, along with a couple, a whole lot of other great prizes. So check it out. We'll have one here, here in uh, Silicon Valley. I think we're actually going to rock it out at the Nokia headquarters on Matilda and Sunnyvale. So with that being said, I'm going to bring up a couple companies. They have badass applications on Windows Phone, and they're going to walk you through and show you some of those experiences. So first up, we have uh, Christian and John from eBay. Y'all give them a hand. Christian, I'm one of those uh, product guys uh, over at eBay. Um, I'm here with a bunch of folks on my team. Uh, John's one of our, our kick-ass developers over at eBay uh, on mobile, and uh, I prepared for weeks for this demo. Uh, Mario asked me like 15 minutes ago, so bear with me as I go through it. Um, over at eBay, we, uh, we really uh, focus on design. That, that's sort of first and foremost, so it's really cool to see that there's some designers out here. Um, obviously, when you take something that's as complex as the, the website for eBay and you try to shrink it down to that real estate, you got to get really creative. So, um, this uh, this application for us was a lot of fun. You know, we got to play around with the, uh, the really cool new Metro design, which we'll see a lot more of. It's on every Windows phone, and you're going to see a lot more of it with Windows 8 coming out in the late fall. Um, how many folks here have a Windows phone? It's a pretty good number, and that's awesome. Yeah, I just picked up my uh, my Lumia 900 last week, and uh, all I can say is the, the cell phone beta test is over. This thing's <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, my 4S is playing second fiddle now. Uh, so let me let me run you guys through the app. Uh, <clears throat> we try to keep it real simple with this sort of tile structure, and right at the beginning, <clears throat> we just show off some, some of the deals of the day and sort of the things that are uh, actionable, like messages you might have, or things you might need to do, like leave feedback. This is a fun little feature that we worked with a uh, dev company in Sweden uh, called Expert Maker to, to, to work on. Um, it basically uses artificial intelligence, although I think Lars would throw a uh, shoe at me if I said that. He calls it a, a evolutionary computing, uh, but it's basically machine-based learning, and it's kind of fun. We try to add a little bit of gamification to our app, um, so basically, we chose uh, nine, so nine of our core sort of categories. So you can go into something like jewelry, um, and then we have this sort of tile structure that'll start bringing up live items that are available on eBay. And then you sort of go through and you answer questions, um, you know, and it helps sort of bring up new uh, items. So here I'm going to try to find a pair of earrings uh, for my wife. So we'll say it's for an adult. Um, type, we are gonna get some earrings here. And style. How about something vintage? And you'll see as these tiles flip over, I start seeing uh, more and more uh, products. So I might see something that I like. Um, I don't really, but assume that uh, she might actually love these. Every, assume, yeah, she might just, just love these. And these take you right to the view item page, and then you can actually purchase right from there. So she'd be she really love me for spending a whopping eight ninety nine. I guess this won't be maybe this is more for my daughter. But anyhow, um, so let me take you guys back, and I'll show you some more of um, some more of uh, what we tried to put in the app, just to make it as functional as possible. Oh. I just keep going back. Yeah, throw my questions. That's, like I said, I prepared uh, endlessly for this demo. Uh, we just actually uh, launched a uh, a new update, uh, which went live last week, and this is really cool. We're actually now allowing uh, people to sell using their their Windows phone. It's a really cool experience. It's a little bit different than uh, it's actually quite a lot different than um, this experience on an iPhone or an Android device. 
So these are sort of the main things that you need to fill out. Um, and it allows you to basically add photos, add a title, um, and it you know, goes right through our catalog to make it easy. So if you're selling a pair of, let's say, Nike shoes, for example, you go in there, select that, and pre-populate a lot of the other fields. So we try to make it as quick of an experience as possible while removing as much of the friction as we can. Um, so all in all, we're getting really, uh, really kick-ass reviews on this, and we had a lot of fun making it. Um, if, for those of you who do have Windows Phone, please go ahead and download uh, our app and play around with it, and let us know what you, uh, what you like and what you don't like. I think that's really it. Well, up next is John from Parking Defenders. Yeah. Thanks, guys. CTO of Parking Defenders. First and foremost, I'd like to thank Nokia and Mobile Monday for this invite. We're really excited to be here. Now, what's Parking Defenders? It's the app that connects your car with your phone by providing you access to a huge marketplace of parking spots. But to get your attention, I'm going to play a little video, uh, a teaser of our app, and we'll get the demo after that. So, yeah, this was a sound. process, we're ending up at, uh, at the home screen. Right now I'm logging with my credentials, so you can see my account. I've got, we've tried to gamify the whole approach to the parking because it should be fun, not frustrating. So we've got achievements, we've got points, we've got, uh, you can see my car, uh, we've got favorites for quick access. Uh, and at the, at the start screen, the application has two modes. Uh, the first mode is where the, the magic happens, it's uh, the offer mode, so when I'm in my office and I'm packing my stuff, I'm clicking offer, and once I do that, a page should load, yes. Now there's a map, I'm pinpointing my, my car's location, um, I'm leaving in 10 minutes, and I'm offering my spot. Right now I'm a defender. So, um, this spot becomes searchable um, and if anyone is in the area and looking for a spot can send me a request. Uh, he needs to send me a request to find the exact position, position of the spot. So, I'm uh, clicking on a seeker. This is how we call those that are looking for a spot. So, we can see more details about people that are interested to park um, where I am. And once I accept uh, the request, I can see more details about him and I can watch him as he approaches uh, to my spot. Those are fake data, so I don't have to leave now. <laughs> um, okay, uh, once I, I done that and the seeker is near, uh, there's a handshake, so we are trying to confirm that the, the transaction happened, so we're asking from you to pick uh, the color of the car that just came. And now, your you're, you're defender, your spot was given to another person that was looking, and you got some points. So those points, you can use them to search. And to be exact, they're being used not to search, but to send a request. So you, you can search, and you can find, let's pick a point on the map. Okay. Okay. Search. So, right now, a few parking spots pop up, okay. And even if I don't have points, I can see them. Uh, we are 
really careful with the whole privacy issues, so we don't reveal the exact location. The, the spot is somewhere in the blue circle. And once we find our spot, we're sending a request. And once our request gets accepted, we can see driving directions to, the, to that place. So probably, yeah. And at the bottom, as I'm closing, uh, you can see the, the exact details of, of the car that I'm searching for. So once I've done that, I've found my defender, i found my spot, I've parked my car, so it's time to give a little feedback on the process, and that's it. Uh, right now, what I have available for you to download is the community version, what, we, what, you, what you saw here. And in the future, we have many things coming up, like uh, giving you access to parking lots, and stuff like that, but what I want you to remember is that with parking defenders, giving a spot today gets you a spot tomorrow. And with that thought, I would like to welcome James on stage uh, with a super cool web app, uh, with a swim app. Check it out. How many golfers do we have out there? Ask me more than that. 45% of the population plays golf. Everybody raise your hand again. All right, that's better. How many people have a Windows phone? How many people have an iPhone? Oh, an Android. Okay, outstanding. You know, Microsoft created the Windows phone now, Keegan partnered with them, AT&T has partnered with them, and they stood up on stage, Chance was up here, talking about the ecosystem, talking about Windows Phone, and the evangelism program, and how it makes a difference. Well, I'm here as proof. The reason that I'm here is to talk, talk to you about what they've done for us, specifically. We had a very successful iPhone app, did very well, Obviously, we're a golf company, executive caddy. We have GPS range finder, score tracking, stats, everything you want on the golf course for you as an individual. And then Windows Phone came along. Windows Phone put people first. And then within the operating system, we have the people hub to integrate yourself with all your friends, built in integration with Facebook, built in integration with Twitter, LinkedIn now. How many people have had a chance to play with the, uh, the people hub? and to see how it connects. Awesome. Anybody want to take a guess what the, uh, the one sport is out there that everybody can play, not just watch on TV? Golf. <laughs> well done, thank you for filling in. So, what we've done is we've created an app not geared towards golf as an individual, but geared towards what we call the social golf experience. We've taken everything you'd like to see from Foursquare, Twitter, Facebook, put it all together, centered around golf, and playing golf, and enjoying the sport. And I give you Executive Caddy, which we call the social golf experience. When you first load up the app, you have your scores, your stats, basic information, a little summary. In the panorama, we give people everything they're looking for in a golf app that we had on other platforms. For example, you have statistics about how you play. We also have rounds that you play, your favorite courses, even golf news. I'll we'll take you quickly through the process of what happens on the course. Let's say I'm going to start a new round of golf. And yeah, maybe I'm going to play at uh, Trump National. It's a fancy club. Now here's something that's different. On other platforms and other golf apps, it's all about you as an individual. What we do is we connect golfers everywhere. You have the ability to set the entire group. It's not just me. It might be my buddies. I might have somebody that's checked in nearby. And then I can add them to the group and then we can all play together. We might be in the same foursome, we might be separated across a 
across the course or across the country. Maybe you have your buddies. Maybe you went, you were in the army, family reunion, whatever it might be. You can create a virtual tournament. You can create a virtual competition, and you can play together even though you're not together. Once we start our rounds, you have hole by hole scoring, stats, range finder, aerial map views, everything you would want. But not just for you, but for the entire group and all of your friends. We have scoring, we have detailed stats, anything you feel like tracking. We have additional players if you set them up. And then, of course, you have a GPS range finder. So when I'm standing out there on the course, and I'm in the middle of the fairway, and I see the green out in the distance, and I want to know how far away is the front of the green, I hold up my phone, and I see the screen that's up being displayed down. That's a GPS range finder. It tells you the distance to the front, the back, the middle, all the layups. We have over 30,000 courses mapped for the range finder. We have the largest and most accurate golf course database in the world. We put all that information in so that our users don't have to do anything. All they do is tee it up and enjoy. We also have area map views. I'm on the seventh hole. Let's say I'm on the first hole, because that's where I am. <laughs> I'm on the first hole of Trump National. This is great. This is what the green looks like. That's how far away it is. So, from an app perspective, we have everything that you should have for the individual. But the really exciting part is what we have to connect you with all your friends, just like Windows Phone. Windows Phone connects you with your buddies through LinkedIn, through Twitter, through Facebook. Video out issues. No worries. Now, just to uh, digress for a second, we also have achievement badges. Why should golf just be boring? Everybody thinks it's a boring game. It doesn't have to be. So we kind of cross the bridge between game and video game. So when you're playing golf, you achieve different achievement badges. You unlock them. You get to compete with your buddies. You get points. You get to compete, have virtual competitions. Just like Foursquare, you can check in. Let's say, for example, I'm having a bad day at work. Like, man, this is a bad day. If I can pick up a game of golf, I'm not going back. So maybe I go to the, uh, the golf course, I'm eating lunch at the clubhouse. And I decide to check in. And I say, okay, I'm in the clubhouse, I'm looking for a game. And I'm going to be there for, I'll be there for 30 minutes. I just got my sandwich. You choose that, you check in. Then you're available to all your buddies and anybody nearby. So if I were going to start a round of golf, I just checked in on, on my phone. If I go to golfers and I take a look to see who's nearby, there it is. There's my other device that I just checked in. Does anybody use an executive caddy right now? Nice. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. So in addition to being able to check in to find your golfers, we also, you can add your friends, you can build groups. We don't have any friends yet, but fortunately, we initiated a friend request from another app. But when it comes to kind of tying it back, not just what do we get with the app, you know, when I, set out to design the executive caddy for Windows Phone. We already had a successful iPhone app, but this looks nothing like our iPhone app. Our iPhone app is very structured, very rigid, and this has a completely different design paradigm, the Metro design paradigm. When I first saw it, I thought, hmm, this is interesting. And the more I got to use it, the more interesting it became, and the more powerful it became. In one year, we've had this app out. We've had continual improvements. We've been able to release 12 updates to this app in one year, and we've been able to release one update to our iPhone app. We have dedicated development teams working on both. Same money, same resources. We can get more done faster. Now, as a result, 
Our iPhone app is all about you as an individual, scoring, rangefinder, stats, that's great. The Windows Phone app gives us not just the ability to do that, now we have achievement badges, we have check-ins, we have online tournaments, we have competitions, we have nearby golfers. And coming up in our next update, which will be in a couple of weeks, augmented reality. So let's say hypothetically you're on the golf course and you hear some cheering off on the side. Like, what is that? What, you know, what, what's going on? You point your phone at that group and on the screen you see the camera feed but then their avatars start popping up on the screen. You tap on it and you see all their scores and all their stats in real time. You see what they're doing on the course. The opportunity for us to do that, to build it into the Windows Phone app, happened 12 times faster, resource-wise and development time-wise, than it could on the iPhone and other platforms. And everything Chance shared with you is the truth. We've been able to put together an absolutely beautiful app, an incredible feature set, and we've been able to do it not just with our own efforts, but we've had the opportunity to work with developer evangelists from Microsoft and from Nokia, as well as to receive guidance, direction. I mean, the opportunity is fantastic. We submitted a support ticket with Apple. It took three weeks to get a response, and it said, check your documentation. <laughs> with Microsoft, with Nokia, with this entire ecosystem, we get dedicated resources, we get help, we get people. And that might not be the case for everybody, but what we, the reason it's worked is because we did our part. We did our part to create the best app that we could, and Microsoft and Nokia has definitely kept their word and helped us to, to refine it, to build it, to promote it, and unfortunately we've had the opportunity to be upgraded to a showcase app. Now when we got nominated to be part of that program, we had a great looking app, but then the guidelines and stringent user experience requirements forced us to do another 250 hours of work just on the UI to pass the quality standards. And as a result, we have an app that I'm just incredibly proud of. We have customers who go to Europe on vacation and they don't want to have a data plan. Our app works with an internet connection, without an internet connection. It's graceful all the time. It downloads course information, it saves it. The user experience is always impeccable. And we really couldn't have done that without the assistance of Microsoft and Nokia. And so, even though I've had the opportunity to demo this app for you today, I also want to have the opportunity to say thank you. Because everybody out here who's a developer, how many developers do we have? If you have an idea, it doesn't matter what you have for funding or resources. If you have an idea and you do your part, the Microsoft and Nokia ecosystem will do their part to help you as much as possible. And that's been a real blessing for us. And as a result, to give you some numbers, our growth has gone up 6% with our iPhone app in 12 months. Our Windows Phone app has grown 14,000% in 12 months. We sign up people every minute of every day using the app. And it's, it's been wonderful. We actually have surpassed our iPhone downloads with our Windows Phone downloads. And you saw the slides at the beginning comparing the size of the market. Even though the iPhone and Android has this huge market, and Windows Phone is so much smaller as it is now, the product is better. And we've been able to, we've been able to substantially increase our downloads, and of course revenue goes along with that. So, I know I ran on a bit, and I apologize for that, but uh, thank you again to Microsoft and Nokia, and I would like to introduce Scott with Plex to uh, take it over from here. Thank you. So, I'm Scott. I'm one of the founders of a little company called Plex, and um, we're on a mission to essentially kind of unsuckify your access to, to media across pretty much any device. So I'm going to um, give you a little flavor of, of what Plex is all about um, here real quick. We've got, let's see. Um, we've got a number of applications. Uh, we've got, we support Windows, Linux, and the Mac. 
with this really nice home theater PC front end that a lot of people are hooking up to their TVs and their living rooms. Right? And actually, before I go on, has anyone heard of Plex? So, so, all right, cool. We've got a couple folks, hopefully a couple more users after tonight. Um, and so, so we support those platforms, and we also have, um, we have users on iOS, Android, and now Windows Phone 7, we released a couple weeks ago. Um, we also have apps for the Roku, we support um, DLNA, and we have you know, stuff running on the built into LG TVs. We have, so we have literally this team of seven written apps on, name a platform, we've written an app on it, right? We're using Amazon Web Services in the back end, and we're doing stuff in every single language conceivable. And one of the interesting things here, and I'll say this because we, we haven't taken any real venture money, so we get to work on whatever the hell we want. We get to work on stuff that we think is cool, which is a lot of fun. And when we saw the Lumia, we, we, we got a chance to check it out. Um, late December, we started you know, to get an idea of what, what we could do there. And I'll show you the app in a minute, but we literally took uh, what took us almost a year on Android to do, we did on Windows Phone 7 in a month. So there's this, as, uh, as we just heard, there's this incredible productivity on the platform. And when you get to play with the stuff on the devices, it's just, it's just super cool. Like we're, we're having a blast and the users are loving it because it's just a great platform to write apps for and to use. So let me, let me just give you an idea here what, what we have um, so that you don't think I'm just making this stuff up. And hopefully things will work here. So I'm able to use, um, my, uh, the app that you can't see right now, I'm able to use that as a remote control here. And what I have is a media server, a Plex media server, that's got access to all of my content, whether it's on my laptop here, or in the case of um, this right here, this is actually my media server back at home, um, if the internet's working here, hopefully it is. Um, this is actually my media server back at home uh, that I can get to content to when I'm on the road. So this is actually one of the methods that we use to get access to this content on the mobile devices as well. So the mobile device becomes a remote control as well as a, um, as a, as a thing that can stream this content. And the content that we focus on is, is video, music, and photos. That's what Ozoplex is really designed to focus on. Um, but we can do a bunch of interesting things like uh, provide search across all of this content. So I can search you know, my library for videos that have the word dog in it and artists that have the word dog in it. And it's going to go online and search all the other things that we provide access to as well. So that's Netflix and Hulu and, you know, Mog and Spotify. So Plex is designed to be this kind of all-in-one place to access all of your media. And, you know, unfortunately the net's slow here, so we're not seeing the stuff pop up. But we would see results come in from all these different places that I can then play right here on So, some of the video channels I can choose to install. And we're pretty international, actually. One of the other kind of notes here is that almost half of our users are outside the U.S. Um, across all these different platforms as well. So we, out the gate, we have to, uh, you know, kind of focus on making things work, you know, everywhere out of the box. Um, but it's, it's also designed to let me share my content, so people can share content from their servers with each other as well. So this is content that my dad is sharing with me. I can get to, you know, my home videos streaming right from his house to my, my home theater front end or on my mobile device as well. And you know, it's, it, it does a great job doing things like getting metadata for all this content. Oh, I'm trying to do this one. Content that's here on my machine, and I can readily, you know, pop up and start playing, you know, a video right on here if I choose to. So, um, each back where I've been, and let me zoom the video and you know, start watching this here. Now, if I flip, if we can flip over to the um, the the, the PC device, here's my here's my remote control. Um, I can do a bunch of stuff here. I can bring up a keyboard on here, so I don't have to go hunting around, you know, to find the content. I can search right on this device. Um, but I can also get to all of that same content that I can get to on the Home Theater app from this device. So here's my channels that I've installed. 
here's you know that same library that we just saw. And you can see if everything's working here, as we hope. That same movie I'm able to see over there, I'm able to get to on this device as well. And it looks great. So this, what was fun about this was it was easy to implement this really nice experience and the response has been really solid to this. People that have used it, and it's a really highly rated app, we did not do anywhere near the amount of work that we had to do on the other platforms. I mean, to make this look better and be more fun to use was literally an order of magnitude easier on this platform, which is why we did it. We just had fun, you know, making the thing go. And here I am, you know, streaming the content, you know, right, right to my device. We're seeing a little bit of this connection here, but, um, you know, it plays fantastic over 3G, it plays great over Wi-Fi, and it's not, again, not just movies, it's also, um, you know, music and my photos, and I can share this stuff, and, and soon you're going to be able to do stuff. This is our first um, uh, app that we can actually do things like share content. So I'll just, one other little cool little feature that Plex has is the ability to, um, to, is to queue up content. So I can be around on the web, I can be on a YouTube page or a Netflix page, and I can, um, I can queue up something that I want to watch later. Literally, just get a little bookmark later, or a little um, plug-in. Should be able to do this. to us here. But I can queue stuff up and that queue then follows me around. That same queue, if I queue up a YouTube video or a Netflix video, it's going to show up on my home theater or it's going to show up on uh, my Windows phone or my iOS device and my Android device. And the Windows phone, because of the productivity, we were able to sneak a bunch of features in that we weren't able to get into some of the other platforms yet. And uh, some of those were the ability to actually share content with other people. So if there's a video that I really want to share, I can bring up that video and recommend it with people. So we were actually able to get more features in on this platform in a tenth of the time versus the other platforms that we've been working on for a long time. So I think um, you know, just the, the bottom line from us is that we were able to create an experience that that was great, and the devices just feel so good in a fraction of the time with a better result. I think at the end of the day. So I think we just we just heard it from other folks. It was such a pleasure to actually you know write for this platform versus other platforms that we've been writing for, and the results show already. And we're excited about iterating it too, right? Because it's actually a really fun iteration process. It's not as painful as other platforms to develop on. So um, I think that gives you a you know, quick run through of, of what our experience was and, and some of the capabilities. We tend to push these platforms, trying to get video that can stream in all these different formats with hardware acceleration, you know, making it look really good over 3G and Wi-Fi, making all this stuff work together. We tend to push these platforms pretty hard. And by far, this was the one where we had the least amount of issues actually getting stuff to work as well. Um, you know, we tend to find all sorts of quarter cases when it comes to video playback and things like that. And this has been an awesome experience for us. So that's that's it for Black. Thanks. Can I retain my existing user experience and pull it over to the Windows phone? 
because I might do the right thing for my users, which is hey, you know, they use they use things a certain way on say an Android, and then can I give them the same experience on say Windows Phone? That's number one. Number two, I'd like to see what the application acquiring experiences, which is how do you get on, what does your marketplace look like, and how do you go in and actually acquire an application, how do you update it. Okay. That's it. Okay, so uh, on, on your first one, um, I, I think it's important to remember that, you're, it, yes, Windows Phone UI with Metro is completely different than iPhone and Android, for, for good reason. And to be honest, it, you're completely backwards in your thought. If you bring an iPhone or Android user interface to a Windows Phone user, they're not going to know what to do with that. They're used to seeing the Metro UI in every application that they do. And we have very strict UI guidelines. So unlike, unlike Android, we actually have, we have a team that goes through every single, every single application to make sure that it aligns with that Metro UI. So yes, it's going to be different. But following the Metro UI guidelines means that anybody that opens an application, any other application in Metro will automatically know how to use your app. If you bring that existing UI element over from another platform, they're not going to know how to do that. Um, and that's actually for the benefit. Uh, second thing, um, how do you get your application discovered, more or less? How do you get in front of the consumers? Okay, so we have, we have a couple different mechanisms for merchandising applications to consumers. Um, matter of fact, if you have an application in here, I'm going to do a pitch real quick. If you have an application in here for Windows Phone that you want to get in front of consumers, come tell me. Give me a card. Give me something. I control every single merchandising point out to Windows Phone consumers. It's a lot of fun. So um, that being said, we have several different things. One, we have Marketplace, first and foremost. There's a lot of different places that we do placement in order to get consumers in front of your application. That's the first one. Second, every single Nokia device comes preloaded with an application called App Highlights. Uh, it's preloaded on every single phone. It's, a, it's also pinned to the home screen right when they open the phone. And we see a 95% activation rate across all sales with consumers using that application for uh, uh, eight minutes at a time. What that, what that application does is allows us to put applications right in front of the consumer that we think are wonderful, great experiences or specials or offers, whatever the case may be. Thematic, you know, if it's July 4th, we're going to have patriotic applications as exciting as that can be. But we will find ways to get in front of them. The third, uh, the third piece is Nokia Collection. So if you go into a, uh, if you pick up any Windows phone, doesn't have to be Nokia, you'll see that every partner uh, OEM has their own shelf. When you open up Marketplace, you'll see a shelf by AT&T with all their apps you'll see a shelf uh, from each OEM. So on the Nokia side, it's called Nokia Collection, and that's where we put exclusive applications to Nokia that are also great experiences. So you'll see things from uh, thing, all, all the applications that Nokia brings out of its own house, as well as any application that is exclusive to Nokia with Windows Phone. So a combination of those, um, uh, James said earlier, we, we've done, a, we make sure that any developer that we come across, we work to get them in front of them. We don't want you to just build an app. We want you to fucking win. Like, if you fail, we fail. So when you bring the app, we'll make sure you're successful. I understand that. I mean, the question I ask more around the end of is how can users know when the application is, uh, let's say a person actually installs the app, right? So I'd like to understand what's the impossibility of them to know, hey, how do I update this? Does it automatically update it? It does all those pieces, so the, the, the mechanisms in there are automatically. So if you publish an update, a user gets a push notification on their device, on the marketplace tile that says two new updates, five new updates, whatever the case may be, and they can install that directly from the handset. It's, it's automatic, very similar to what happens, except, except for the fact that you don't have to go into the store like you, to check for updates like you do with iOS. Uh, next question, Thierry. It's not a question, it's just about uh, your question of marketplace. One of the things that I found most amazing in the marketplace is the implementation of trial to purchase. Uh, it's, I mean, I've been using the other platforms as well. I work at Nokia, I have to admit. But uh, if you try an app, and then when you want to buy the app, it's just within the, within the workflow of the app, you say, I want to upgrade. It leads you to the marketplace. You pay in one click. And then when you exit, the app is already turned from the launched trial app that you were in 
into a launched full app at the location that you want. Yeah, how many of you guys have an Xbox? Any Xbox users? All right, so when you download a game from Xbox, it, you, you download the trial version, but you're actually downloading the full application. The unlock mechanism is just like a, just a piece of code. So we do the same thing with Windows Phone. You download the full version of the app, but the developer can set the requirements, whether they want it to be try and buy based on, you know, the, the free version has ad support, or they want the trial to be for a time period, or a certain amount of usage, whatever the case may be, the developer can set those stats and then, or those pieces and then one click enables the full application. Uh, I know that Nokia was working on something for terminal mode for automotive use. Oh, sorry. Nokia was working on something called terminal mode for automotive use. Is uh, Windows compatible with that? Um, so the question was, is Windows compatible with terminal mode? And uh, Nokia, it's something that we brought to enable kind of kind of like what we just did here with video out over USB. Uh, not currently. Um, our goal is to make sure that we bring every innovation back to the Windows Phone platform. You'll hear our, our CEO said something very similar. It's like a stupid con statement. I hate even saying that. But anything that we have on another platform, we're working with Windows Phone. Uh, as a designer, I think one of the most compelling uh, aspects of the platform is what you do with people. So you have all these related feeds around people. It's like a 360 view. And so some, a couple of people mentioned about the sharing capabilities in the app. Can you speak towards that, about what, it, what you've done to, to optimize getting the people aspect into sharing into the applications? Is anything different than iOS or Android? Sure, absolutely. So I get the question was around uh, the integration points that have been that have that are in Windows Phone around sharing and social. So unlike other platforms, Windows Phone actually enables uh, kind of like overlays. We don't merge data with contacts, but we merge the contacts. So uh, how many of you have ever used an Android device and when you like bring in your Facebook or Twitter, it like duplicates the shit out of everything and then you have like 700 contacts of like one person. We didn't want that to happen. <laughs> so what happens is that it looks for similarities across email, uh, first name, last name, uh, URLs, etc., and automatically pairs someone. So if my email address for my Twitter account is the same as the email address you have for me as a contact, it's an automatic pairing there and all the information comes in. So you can see when you click on my contact, Every piece of information across LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, uh, and the actual contact VCF itself all in one place. It's really beautiful. How that translates back to sharing is that you know our, our approach with Windows Phone, or Microsoft's approach with Windows Phone, is that you don't need an application for everything. Sometimes your phone should just do stuff, you know, like you, right out of the box. And so we've enabled that feature. One of the things that I love the most is Facebook integration in the platform. It's the only phone and it does this better than any other phone in the marketplace that integrates Facebook into almost every aspect of the phone. Your calendar, you just sign in, first of all, which is phenomenal. You sign in at our accounts, it automatically enables sharing. You can share directly from the camera. You can, when you share, you can automatically tag people and it pulls up your Facebook contacts. Uh, your calendar items that happen in Facebook automatically pull into the calendar app on your phone. No, no, no sign up, no anything, minus the first one. Uh, there's automatic integration of Facebook chat. All the details come in under people to see the details, birthdays, you know, profile picture, URLs, whatever the case may be, all come under one place. So the, the sharing aspect is great inside those pieces. Birthday notifications. I actually hate birthday notifications. I don't like anybody's birthday, but not but my birthday. Hi. Um, what about uh, opening and closing the ads in Windows Phone? Okay, so opening and closing? Especially closing the apps. Closing the apps. So we believe that you don't you shouldn't have to close apps, to be honest. I mean, why? If you're you're either using an app or you're not. It's just like imagine if how many of you <laughs> When you use your web browser, there's like, by the end of the day, there's like 15 different tabs open on Firefox. And you're like, what is all this crap that you've been looking at all day, but you never closed any of them. Imagine you had to go back and close every single one of those just because you weren't using it. What you'd like to do is just be able to go back to that page when you want to go back to that page. So we use the demand paging and the tombstoning to bring those pieces back to life. So when a consumer does go back into the application, it's right where they left it. 
Um, and then they don't have to worry about closing it because it's not using any resources in the device. Why close it if it's not doing anything? But how do you know that if I wanted to use my previous app, for example, if I have to switch and open, I can easily switch between. Otherwise, I have to go again through all the list of the apps and I have to open it again. Is it, I don't know. So you, if you do have a Windows phone, you just hold back. Yeah. And if it's an application that you've recently used, it's right there. Yeah, it will take you to only five apps or something. More, it will not take more than five. That's true. That is currently true with Windows Phone Mega. But in using the product, it has not been a concern for me. This, this is how I approach it. So the apps that I use a lot, they're on my home screen. So the apps that I don't use a lot, they're in my app list and I search for them. But going back to an application hasn't, hasn't been an issue so far. Yeah, actually, just I wanted to, when you were talking about the UI, no? like, WebOS is the one of the best UI I have seen so far. The way it closes the apps and we switch between the apps and move the apps. Can Windows Phone also can have similar kind of future and future? You're gonna to have to Take tell me that one again. Take that one Take okay, yeah, come, come see me afterwards. Oh, okay, let me make sure I understand. All right, we got time for one more question, and then we're gonna draw for some phones. You have the option of being able to close the application. No, you don't have the option to be able to close it because it's not. There's nothing to close. It's kind of like pausing. Um, it's kind of like having multiple TV screens and pausing it. Like it, you just move out from it, and when you come back to it, it resumes right back where it is. But it's not running any tasks in the background. I remember when I had Windows Mobile 6.5, like you had to go into the task manager and kill everything because your device would slow down, like ridiculously slow down. That's not the case here. It's either using a core function and using up stuff, and if you're not actively using the application, it's not. Press on the Windows key, it allows you to launch another application and your application stays in the memory. If you use the back key, and some for some applications you need to use back, 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 but the last back you do <coughs> quits the application. So that's a way to get it. Alright, so we're gonna give away some phones real quick. You have to be here to win. I guess the people that aren't here wouldn't hear that. Um, we're gonna pull out your business card, all you shady people that are gonna come up here and try to be Michael Gore, uh, you just got to show an ID. Michael, are you still here? Slacker. <laughs> Can we do this stuff? Something fun? Can we put a fire in here? <laughs> you know, fun, Sheena. All right, the next winner, Horace Lee. Yes! Checking Kevin, I don't trust that guy. <laughs> I don't see yeah. uh, Next winner, Bonnie Wang. <laughs> oh, okay. Next weeder, a oh, weeder. <laughs> How now, Brown Cow? Next winner. That was almost really bad. <laughs> it was a D, not an A. Uh, Peter Bunas. Did I say that right? Bunas? All right. Thank you for coming here. How many do we have left? Okay. Next winner is uh, Chuck Huey. Alright, and our last winner is Adam Ruff. Oh, it's kind of weird. Okay. And, uh, Mario, I think that's, that's it. Okay, we'll turn this back over to you. Thank you guys for coming out, really appreciate it. Find one of us with right. a tag on. We're going to do uh, community announcements. If you guys have, I'll take the first five guys here. 60 seconds, so if you're hiring, fire in. <laughs> uh, <laughs> looking to, looking to, uh, to do an announcement, I'll take the first five guys here. Um, 60 seconds, yes. Okay, come on up.
my name is Bonnie and my business is appdevelop.com. So I help entrepreneurs develop iOS, Android, HTML5 apps. So if you guys are looking for a high quality developer, check, check me out, talk, uh, uh, talk, with me, talk with me or check out the website appdevelop.com. Thank you. Chairman for the Mobile Gaming USA 2012 conference in San Francisco on May 9th and 10th. And we are going to be bringing in people from all the major uh, platforms and ecosystems, uh, developers, publishers, uh, other people, other vendors in the ecosystem. We'd love to talk to everyone who might want to play a part in this particular event. Um, as I said, I'm the chairman and the organizers of FC Business Intelligence, so they have a great reputation, a great track record. Uh, and getting exposure for a lot of different folks. So if you're interested, let me know. I'd love to talk to you. Thank you. What's that website? The website is www.mobilegamingusa.com. Thanks. Hi, I uh, represent uh, WCA Wireless Communications Alliance. Uh, we've got an awesome event coming up uh, on Wednesday night, this Wednesday. Which I'm moderating. Uh, it's titled "Mobile Sensors: Innovating User Experiences." Uh, we've got five fantastic mobile sensor companies pitching uh, different flavors of sensors and demoing uh, a compelling set of use cases, as well as uh, seven awesome partner demos, similar to ones you've seen tonight. But uh, you know, all using uh, very uniquely different flavors of sensors, and we're going to showcase what sensor fusion is all about using uh, mobile sensors. And uh, we've got. Uh, uh, you know, uh, 225 seats uh, you know, available, out of which only less than 20 remain. So we're, it's going to be a packed house at Qualcomm Santa Clara this Wednesday night. And we're specifically interested in uh, seeing a lot of ASK developers there to really uh, show you guys how, uh, you know, differentiated, truly differentiated user experiences implemented using different flavors of mixture of uh, sensors. So if you're interested in checking us out, please uh, go visit our website, www.wca.org. That's WCA.org, and uh, we look forward to seeing a lot of you there. And we're going to give out uh, actually more free phones than what you've seen tonight uh, at the event, as well as some food. Hi, my name is uh, Ashwin Radia, and I'm with uh, Avant Soft. Uh, we are a mobile application development company. Uh, I'm looking for an uh, enterprise application designer to work with a client in uh, Santa Clara. Uh, it's going to be a long extended project, uh, on-site project, so if you have that background, please uh, talk to me. Uh, we develop uh, Santa Touch applications, but I'm also looking for people who can help develop Santa Touch applications on a part-time or full-time basis. Thanks. Guys, thanks again. Give a good round to Nokia. Thanks for the pizza and beer, guys. Um, uh, see May 7th, Google ad mediation is the topic, so look forward to that. See you guys. Good night. It sounds good to uh, 